Hello. In this lesson, we're going to have a look at some of the reasons that we study this dot product and cross product, because they are very useful in fields such as physics, but not only. Let's look at some of the applications in which dot and cross products are indispensable. So in the first diagram that you see here, I have an arm, this vector r, and a force forcing it to rotate. The resultant of such force over this object is going to result into a torque. Now this letter is called tau, it's a Greek letter, and we define the torque as the cross product between the arm and the force. Then the magnitude of this torque, as we know, already defined for the cross product, is going to be the magnitude of the arm times the magnitude of the force times sine of the angle between the two vectors, theta. The arm is the vector that starts at the pivot point to the point where the force is being applied. One more thing I like to mention about this uh, torque is the measuring units. So the force is going to be measured in newtons and the arm in meters. Therefore the torque is going to be measured in newton meters. The direction of the torque vector is going to be determined using the same right hand rule, just like before. After all, it's just a cross product, or a vectorial product, if you wish. A few more things that you should know is that the formulas that we had for the projection of a vector on another vector, that we had for two space, they apply in three space as well. So basically, on these two vectors, regardless if the vectors are in two or three space, the formulas for projection of a vector b on a is going to be the same, equal to magnitude of b cosine of theta, the angle between the two vectors, times the vector a over its magnitude, the unit vector in the direction of a. Or if you want in, uh, to use algebraic vectors, this following formula would be much more useful for you. So projection of b on a is going to be the dot product between b and a over the dot product between a and a times a, the vector. That's one thing. And then if you have the mechanical work as we remember, uh, we can use the same formula like just like we did before. So if we have this displacement r and the force that acts over an object at an angle theta, then we know that the work is going to be the dot product between those uh, two vectors, f and r. The projection and the work are using the same formulas just like before, regardless if it's in two space or three space. There is another type of product that basically a combination of the two dot and cross product, such as these, a dot b cross c. So it's a combination of the dot and cross product, and we call this a triple scalar product. Pay close attention that this cross product between b and c has to be performed first. Because if you would perform the dot product between A and B first, that will result in a scalar, and then you will have a scalar cross a vector, which has no meaning. So therefore, we cannot do that. We always have to start with a cross product, which will result in a vector, and then we're going to have a dot product between two vectors, which is very easy to calculate. There is a very good reason to have such a triple scalar product in many instances. As you can see on this diagram, I sketched this parallelepiped, a solid that has each face a parallelogram. So if I take a reference, this lower corner, from which all these three vectors A, B, and C, B and C being representing the sides of the base, and A, one of the lateral sides of this uh, solid, then we can use the triple scalar product to calculate the volume of this solid. So the volume is going to be the magnitude of this triple scalar product A dot B cross C. Let me actually uh, demonstrate what I just said here with this volume. I'm going to sketch the height of this uh, solid from the top corner and I'm going to uh, call it H. So we know that in order to calculate this volume, uh, geometrically speaking, is going to be the area times the height. So I need this height. 
in the triangle that I just uh, constructed with these uh, extra blue lines and the vector A, the lateral side, and I'm going to call this angle between H and A alpha. So I can calculate cosine of alpha is H over magnitude of A, which means that H is magnitude of A cosine of alpha. So the H, we already have it. Now the area of the base, we already know how to calculate an area of a parallelogram when we know the sides. It's going to be the magnitude of the cross product between those sides, so B and C. Now all we have to do is put it all together. So the volume, it's the area, the magnitude of the cross product between B and C, times the height h, which is magnitude of a cosine of alpha. We can reorganize this just to make it uh, look a little prettier. So I'm going to say magnitude of a times magnitude of b cross c times cosine of alpha. We can do that. So let me just catch on the diagram the resultant of the cross product between b and c. We know it's a vector and is perpendicular on both B and C. So it's going to be a vector that's pointing up from this plane. We can see that it's also parallel to H, the height, because that's how we constructed H to be orthogonal on the plane on the base. So the angle alpha between H and A is the same as the angle between A and this vector B cross C. Therefore, we can identify that this expression that resulted for uh, the volume of this solid, it's by definition the magnitude of the dot product between this first vector A and the second vector B cross C. And that's exactly what we said the formula for calculating the volume of a solid is all about. It's just the magnitude of this uh, triple scalar product because we don't want uh, negative values for it. The volume has to be a positive value. And with this, I'm going to conclude this lesson. Thanks for watching.